a wholesale shift to electric vehicles could be significantly improving chi children's health globally. A Codcurs, a promising technology that is gaining traction worldwide. I've been in the auto industry 40 years and I've never seen this kind of investment. The electric vehicle revolution has been electrifying, with sales soaring and environmental anxieties easing. However, a dark cloud has emerged in the form of a troubling trend, EVs catching fire. This alarming development has rattled consumers and industry experts alike, raising a lot of critical questions. What causes these fires? Are certain EV models more susceptible than others? And how do these fires compare to the fiery demise of traditional gasoline-powered vehicles? New information coming out of India has given us an answer to some of these questions, and you won't believe it. Join us as we discuss the shocking reason why EVs are blowing up. Before we get into details, it's important to understand just how serious this issue is. In recent years, there have been multiple incidents of electric vehicles catching fire around the world raising concerns about their safety. One shocking event took place in Hong Kong in 2023 when a woman had a terrifying experience with her BYD electric car. The car, which was equipped with lithium-ion phosphate batteries known for their safety and stability, suddenly burst into flames while being charged at a station. The resulting explosion completely destroyed the car and left the woman with burns. The cause of the fire was still under investigation, with experts suspecting a potential short circuit or faulty battery management system. This alarming incident is just one example of the safety concerns surrounding EVs. In 2019, in Florida, a man driving a Tesla Model S lost control of the vehicle and collided with a palm tree, causing the car's lithium-ion battery to ignite, engulfing the car in flames. Lithium-ion batteries were known for their risk of thermal runaway a dangerous chain reaction leading to fire or explosion. The situation became even more dire as the car's retractable door handles, designed to automatically deploy in emergencies, failed to function properly, leaving the driver trapped inside the burning vehicle. Even emergency responders encountered difficulties as they attempted to break through the windshield, which proved resistant to breakage. Tragically, the driver eventually died from smoke inhalation and burns. The fire department had to use special equipment to slice through the car's metal frame and force open the doors. Tesla later recalled the retractable door handles, but it was too late for Awan. Liliana Awan, the widow of Omar Awan, holds the car accountable for her husband's death. She expressed her grief by saying, I hold the car accountable for my children's lives. They lost their father because of that car. I lost my husband because of that car. These incidents have sparked widespread concern about the safety of EVs and have raised questions about the potential risks associated with their use. In the wake of recent incidents around the world, Dutch semiconductor design company NXP has thrown a hand grenade into this already volatile situation. Their chief technology officer, Lars Rieger, made a startling proclamation, pointing the finger at a seemingly unexpected source. Cheap laptop chips used in battery management systems, or BMS, of electric vehicles. In an interview with Money Control, Rieger asserted that original equipment manufacturers in India, driven by razor-thin margins, are resorting to cost-cutting measures that compromise safety. He argues that using these cheap solutions from laptops in complex EV battery management systems leads to a predictable and potentially disastrous outcome the same failure each time. Rieger's statement carries significant weight. The Indian EV market is booming, but it's a land of fierce competition and tight margins. In this cutthroat environment, some manufacturers might be tempted to prioritize affordability over safety features like robust BMS chips. As Rieger suggests, the allure of a little more expensive battery management chips might be overshadowed by the pressure to deliver the cheapest possible products. This, he argues, could be leading to a series of beginner's mistakes with potentially devastating consequences. The recent pronouncements by Lars Rieger have cast a spotlight on the NXP. At first glance, one might assume NXP's interest stems from India's immense market potential, which is one of the world's fastest-growing major economies. However, the story goes deeper than just chasing market share. NXP's roots might be firmly planted in Europe, but its commitment to India is anything but superficial. 
Formed in 2006 after a spinoff from electronics giant Philips, NXP has embarked on a strategic acquisition spree in India, specifically targeting companies with strong engineering talent. This strategy is evident in their robust presence across four Indian cities, Delhi, Bengaluru, Pune, and Hyderabad. These centers house a formidable force of 3,500 to 4,000 engineers, constituting a significant portion, one-third of NXP's entire engineering workforce globally. This substantial investment in Indian engineering talent highlights NXP's long-term commitment to the region's technological development. While their overall revenue is largely driven by automotive chips, around 55%, industrial applications, 25%, and segments like payments and mobile, their focus extends beyond mere profit margins. NXP recognizes the critical role it can play in ensuring the safe and sustainable growth of the Indian EV industry. Rieger's pointed criticism of cheap laptop chips being used in EV battery management systems, BMS, stems not just from a business perspective, but also from a genuine concern for safety. The timing of Rieger's comments is particularly pertinent. Summer, a season historically linked to a rise in EV fire incidents, is just around the corner. India has already witnessed a string of such incidents with major brands like Ola Electric, Okinawa Autotech, Pure EV, and even Tata Motors facing negative publicity due to these events. Consumer confidence has been shaken and questions about the safety of these vehicles have become increasingly vocal. Adding fuel to the fire is a report from a government panel instituted last year. Their investigation into past EV fires revealed a troubling trend. The vehicles in question were equipped with woefully inadequate BMS systems and lacked even basic safety features. This revelation underscores Rieger's claims and raises serious concerns about the safety priorities of some manufacturers in the Indian EV market. Another company that is feeling the heat is Jaguar. Jaguar has issued a recall for its first mass-produced electric car, iPACE, in the U.S., which is one of the first long-range electric vehicles in the global market. This isn't the iPACE's first brush with battery-related issues. Just last year, Jaguar, now owned by Tata Motors, recalled nearly 6,400 iPACE EVs sold in the U.S., the culprit? A software glitch requiring an update to monitor battery pack health, a crucial step to prevent potential fires. The previous recall addressed vehicles manufactured between 2019 and 2024, with some even requiring a complete replacement of the battery energy control module. Thankfully, Jaguar offered these replacements free of charge. However, the latest news is far more concerning. According to documents released by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, or NHTSA, 258 I-PACE EVs from the 2019 model year are being recalled due to a multitude of technical problems that could lead to thermal overload, a condition where the battery generates excessive heat, increasing the risk of fire. The most alarming aspect of this recall is Jaguar's lack of an immediate fix. The NHTSA documents offer no solution, leaving owners of these specific iPACE models in a state of uncertainty and heightened anxiety. Imagine owning a car that could potentially turn into a fiery inferno with no clear timeline for a solution. This is a major setback for consumer confidence in the safety and reliability of electric vehicles. Diving deeper into the specifics of the recall, documents released by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration reveal a troubling discovery. The affected vehicles, specifically 2019 iPACE models with battery packs manufactured between March 1, 2018 and May 31, 2018, appear to be particularly susceptible to a potentially dangerous phenomenon, short circuits within the battery cells. The NHTSA report warns that the risk of a short circuit increases significantly when the battery charge level surpasses 85%. This translates to a chilling reality for owners of these specific iPACE models. Imagine charging your car for a long trip only to discover that exceeding 85% capacity could trigger smoke or even a fire erupting from the high-voltage battery pack. The potential consequences are dire. Injuries and property damage, especially if the vehicle is parked indoors.
The situation becomes even more complex when considering the previous recall of the IPACE. The NHTSA document acknowledges that the earlier recall addressed potential thermal overload issues, offering some reassurances. However, it seems the previous fix might not entirely eliminate the risk. Out of an abundance of caution, Jaguar is taking the necessary steps to address any lingering doubts and ensure the safety of its customers. The document also reveals that a permanent solution for this short-circuiting issue is still under development. This leaves owners of these 2019 iPACE models in a state of limbo. Until a definitive fix emerges, Jaguar advises them to take two crucial precautions. The first is to limit charging to a maximum of 75%. This significantly reduces the risk of a short circuit by keeping the battery well below the 85% danger zone. However, this also reduces the car's overall driving range, potentially causing inconvenience for long journeys. Unfortunately, electric vehicles are more likely to catch fire while charging or immediately thereafter. One of the most high-profile examples of this phenomenon involved the Chevrolet Bolt. A series of troubling incidents involving bolts bursting into flames while connected to a charger sparked a massive recall, impacting over 60,000 vehicles. The situation became so critical that Chevrolet issued a stark warning to bolt owners, advising them to park their cars a staggering 50 feet away from anything else, a drastic measure highlighting the severity of the fire risk. Thankfully, this was a temporary solution implemented until a permanent fix could be developed. Investigations into the Bolt's fires revealed the culprit, faulty batteries. However, the exact cause remains somewhat murky. Was it a manufacturing defect with the batteries themselves, or were they susceptible to damage during the production process, leading to a product liability issue? Regardless of the precise origin, the problem was identified and a solution was implemented. Thankfully, reports suggest that post-recall bolt fires haven't occurred at a rate exceeding the normal incidence of electric vehicle fires. The second is to park the car outside and away from the buildings. This mitigates the potential damage in case a fire erupts due to a short circuit. While a sensible precaution, it's not always a practical solution for everyone, especially those living in urban areas with limited parking options. It is important that these issues are sorted out quickly. Unlike their gasoline-powered counterparts, electric vehicle fires present unique challenges for firefighters. One major obstacle is the sheer intensity of the heat generated by burning EV batteries. These fires can reach temperatures exceeding 1,500 degrees Fahrenheit, significantly hotter than a typical gasoline fire, which peaks around 1,100 degrees Fahrenheit. This extreme heat makes it incredibly difficult for firefighters to approach the vehicle, hindering their ability to extinguish the flames directly. Further complicating matters is the nature of the burning material. Unlike a gasoline fire, which burns readily on the surface and can be smothered with extinguishing agents, EV fires involve the battery itself. The battery pack is often a sealed unit, and unless it explodes or cracks open, traditional firefighting methods like applying coolant or foam become largely ineffective. The fire needs to be starved of oxygen or allowed to burn itself out, which takes a significantly longer time compared to a gasoline fire. The traditional firefighting approach of using water also comes with limitations. While water can be helpful in cooling surrounding material and preventing the fire from spreading, it has minimal impact on the burning battery itself. In fact, large quantities of water can exacerbate the problem by creating a dangerous situation involving a combination of electrical current and water. Firefighters battling EV fires often require 10 times the amount of water compared to a gasoline fire, a staggering amount that can strain local resources and prolong the incident. For these reasons, a fire extinguisher carried in a car for personal use is unlikely to be effective against the thermal runaway event in an EV. At best, it might offer a few precious seconds to escape the vehicle safely before the intense heat intensifies. The key lies in evacuation, getting yourself and others out of harm's way and allowing allowing trained professionals with specialized equipment to handle the situation. The unique challenges posed by EV fires necessitate a shift in firefighting tactics and equipment. Fire departments are increasingly investing in specialized training for EV fire response, including understanding thermal runaway and proper cooling techniques. Additionally, new firefighting technologies like thermal imaging cameras and specialized cooling systems are being developed to combat these high heat situations more effectively. What do you think about this? Let us know in the comments section.